let's make this awesome surface plate setup. My old surface plate setup was really inefficient. So, what are the current issues? You've got your nice part that you want to check, and no. <sighs> My aim is to make the surface plate readily available. Warning, the following sequence is rated W. It contains woodworking. This is 9mm MDF for the lid. I'm using PVA glue here, but to help hold it quickly, I use some soup glue. And some nails for good measure. Now onto the steelwork. This bracket is for a locking strut design, although later on I changed my mind during the build. <laughs> This is 25 by 2 square hollow section for the frame. Ideally I'd be using painted tubing, but I've got loads of surplus galvanised tubing. At some point in the future I'll get around to making a proper fume extractor. At the moment I'm just making do with a fan. Nature has its place, and that is outside of my workshop. So these caps are the prevent spider hiding holes. I'm showing the whole build here, however this rod gets cut off later. It was intended to be used alongside with the locking strut. To secure these, I'm going to use button head metal screws. I want to screw these from underneath. So we're holding in a steel instead of MDF, because the steel's stronger. I'm now using the redneck forklift and I'm moving the surface plate just to allow for the hinges. To really seal the MDF lid, I'm using two layers of undercoat and two layers of top coat. MDF is full of particles and I don't want those getting on my surface plate. While this layer of paint is drying, we'll have a look at organization. I'm chasing this part with my ninja sticks to prevent the part moving as the part comes free. 
I deliberately avoided tabs because they're a pain. And here I'm playing with 3D tool paths to make a scallop. And that's the scraper storage sorted. So I intend to do some video series on some more technical things that you can do with your router. Let me know if you're interested. At this point I realised the latching strut wasn't the best idea. So I'm removing it, the mount on the lid, and also the catch bar. For the hinge I made up some little plastic washers. So these are acetal. So these should give me a lower friction, smoother action on the hinge. Now for some extra bling, I'm adding an LED light strip. The lighting is a bit average in my surface plate area, so this is an attempt to improve it. I'm likely to forget turning off the light. I'm using a leftover limit switch to make sure it gets turned off. A quick check to make sure I wire it correctly. Off to the side I painted the storage. Now I'm just laying it out to check the arrangement. I'm using hot glue because I suspect I'm going to want to reconfigure this in the future. This gives me more options. Let me address a few things you might have picked up on. The hinge isn't actually true to the plate. The gap changes at the back here. And the reason for that, my floor is not level. The frame of the base goes off at an angle and then the surface plate is level on top. Through the hinge I made, the lid is attached to this frame, so the lid goes off on an angle as well. But I set the plate as level. That's the reason for this gap changing here. But it works fine, and in fact it's better for the next point. You might be thinking contact of the lid on the plate is a bad idea. Having this lid come down is going to contaminate the plate and leave particulates on here every single time it makes contact. Because everything is over on an angle, and the plate's level, it's actually only contacting at this one corner here. It's not even on the surface itself. And we can see that. So you can see here where it's worn. I might include a rubber foot or something in the future, but I'm not worried about it. Now I didn't have to paint everything down here, but I don't like precision surfaces like the bottom of this height gauge resting on wood. Wood is full of particles. It attracts moisture. It's just not a good recipe for precision surfaces. So next question. Why does the light strip come from the bottom and it finishes halfway up? Well, it's, you see it's for lighting balance. So having the, all the light come from this side and less from this side, it helps give a contrast to the object that you're illuminating. Voice over Tom here. So while Tom's talking BS here, the real reason why the light strip is too short is he cut it too short. Blame the saw guy.